North America is a stunning place to travel with so many RV destinations to visit. From majestic mountainscapes, turquoise waters, history, national parks, and charming coastal towns. You might be wondering where to start. In 800 feet, your destination will be on the right. That's where I'm going. If you've been watching KYD for the past seven years, you've probably heard us use the phrase top five. I'm putting the narrows in my top five. This is best. ranking up in the top five experiences since we started the channel. So we broke down our top five, added each time we use the phrase, and in this video, we'll be sharing with you the top 100 places to visit in North America. Never ever would I have expected this. Amazing, there's a sow and her cub. She's almost as big, the cub is almost mm -hmm. as big as the mom. We broke up this list into states or regions and included chapters to make it easy for you to watch a particular area you may be interested in visiting. The regions include Alaska, Alberta, Mid-Atlantic, British Columbia, California, Florida, Mexico, the Midwest, Mountain States, Northeast, Ontario, Pacific Northwest, Quebec, the Southwest, Texas, and the South. Before we dive in, the Summer to Remember store is now open. You voted, and this is the winning design. If you've joined in the fun before, you know that this is more than a shirt. It's a symbol of making it a summer to remember, no matter how big or small. And that's why we have a free printable summer checklist and the hashtag summer to remember so we can follow along on your adventures this summer. We love hearing stories of people meeting each other and making new friendships. And we'll be keeping an eye out for you too. So don't wait, join in by going to keepyourdaydream.com slash summer. And know that $1 for every shirt sold will go to care camps so kids with cancer can make it a summer to remember too. Together, we really do make a difference. Now, let's get started with the first 50 of our top 100 best places to visit in North America, starting with Alaska. So now we need to think of a riddle. I know a moose will be involved. Just like a new day, a breath of fresh air in my life. A typical RV trip to Alaska is between 45 and 100 days, making it a bucket list destination, and rightfully so, because of the wildlife with the rugged views, spectacular glaciers, and bears. So many beautiful bears. Although there are countless locations to mention, three stand out. The first one being Homer, Alaska. Homer is a small city on the bay on Alaska's Kenai Peninsula, best known for fishing. And that is where Carson caught his $1,000 halibut in a fishing derby. But be sure to research the local food because it will not disappoint nor will the ocean views, side trips, or hiking. Also on the Kenai Peninsula is the town of Kenai that sits at the mouth of the Kenai River, where you'll see locals dip net fish, and it's a great place for excursions. We took a bear viewing and fly fishing tour to Wolverine Creek. That was one of the many highlights of our trip. For more information about that trip, we'll link the full episode here. A must-see stop, likely on your way out of Alaska, depending on your route, is Valdez. The wildlife and wildflowers are stunning in their own right, but the glaciers here will blow you away. We did two excursions, the first being the Lulubel, where we learned more about the history of Valdez and forged our way through icy waters for a view of the Columbia Glacier. You know what this is? Amazing. Yes, a floating classroom. It is. It's a geological experience. We get to talk about erosion, we get to talk about icebergs, but that's what I feel like Alaska has been like the entire time. Mm -hmm. Seeing glaciers is one thing, but walking on them is totally different. We had the chance to explore the Valdez Glacier on foot and hear the hissing noises of an active glacier moving and shifting below our feet. We have an entire season on Alaska, and we'll link the playlist here. 
but for now, there are 97 more places to visit. So let's move on to Alberta, Canada. If you don't have time for an Alaska adventure just yet, the province of Alberta will keep you in awe. A frequently asked question is, out of all the places you've been, which is your favorite? Although it's impossible to have just one, Banff sure comes to mind. As a starting point, visit the Fairmount at Lake Louise and drink in the beauty with a walk around the lake. Take a canoe or visit the tea garden. Then jump back in your car for a scenic drive over to the glacier-fed Moraine Lake, which just might be the most vivid blue you have ever seen. If you have time, heading just three hours up the road is worth your while. Visiting the alpine town of Jasper National Park will leave a lasting memory. And if you're up for an adventure, you can book a tour to see the Athabasca Glacier up close and personal. For foodies, check out the food tour or just relax and enjoy this charming town. Now let's head back to the United States and take a road trip to the Mid-Atlantic, filled with history and culture up the East Coast, starting with Savannah, Georgia. We've been to Savannah twice and in each visit we uncover a little more history and charm. Forsyth Park is likely the most popular attraction among visitors, and especially photographers, to capture a picture of the fountain, which was created in 1858. This is another foodie town, so bring your appetite, and you can't go wrong with a self-guided architectural drive. Just up the coast will likely feel like you're walking back in time. Charleston, South Carolina is a port town founded in 1670, and best known for its cobblestone streets, horse-drawn carriage rides, and flocks of ladies visiting for weddings or just a good old-fashioned girl How trip. How many dresses do you have in there? <laughs> I think we've reached. <laughs> I think we've reached it. <laughs> I bet not. I'll bet there's more. There. Move a bit further inland to North Carolina, and you'll find the Biltmore Estate in Asheville. The Biltmore Estate is America's largest home and built by George Vanderbilt. The property, winery, and architecture is definitely worth touring. So make sure you give yourself enough time to do it all. When you enter, you'll be handed what looks like a phone for a self-guided tour. And Caleb took this concept to heart. There are plenty of RV parks in the area as well as other places to hike and poke around. So you won't run out of things to explore if you spend a few days. These days I've tried you might be a tourist if you don't have to be an aviation enthusiast to appreciate the Wright Brothers National Monument, located in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Visiting the monument is educational for any age, and not too far from Body Island Lighthouse. It's an impressive lighthouse standing 156 feet tall. And while you're there, you can read all about it and why this exact location was selected. We'd love to stay here longer, but Cape Charles is calling. Located just north of Virginia Beach, you'll take a series of bridge tunnels and arrive at a popular East Coast summer destination. There are a variety of RV resorts to choose from and some providing ocean views and beach access. We visited during the summer while driving the bird and definitely picked up the summer vacation vibe. I have a nice headache. Oh, oh, oh wow. Cape Charles was just one stop before our next destination, Washington, D.C. All the bullets that we dodging, hide the bones in the garden, never beg for a pardon. Cash in before the house rules, never 
break from the ground rules Got too high off our own fumes We keep playing with fire We were lucky enough to have been invited to the Marine Barracks Parade while in Washington, D.C., another spot on our top 100 that should be on everyone's RV route, no matter what your nationality. Visiting our nation's capital is equally inspiring as it is sobering. The neoclassical architecture is grand, and the monuments are worth touring by foot, bike, or even electric scooters. And if you have some time, reach out to your state senator or congressman for a tour of the capital. Before you leave the east, a visit to Shenandoah National Park will make for a stunning drive. Perhaps one of the perfect places to visit during the fall to see the colors change. But you'll also get access to the Blue Ridge Parkway, wineries, and more history than you'll know what to do with. The southernmost part of the parkway will take you to the Great Smoky Mountains, and we'll talk more about that shortly. Now, let's go to British Columbia. You can make an entire itinerary from just these three locations, starting with Whistler in British Columbia. Just an hour and 45 minutes north of Vancouver is home to the largest ski resort in North America, Whistler Blackcomb. Whistler's namesake comes from the marmots that whistle on the mountainside. This beautiful location was also home to the Olympics in 2010. We took more of an adventurous approach to Whistler, but you can enjoy hiking, canoeing, or pretty much anything outdoors. If you want to balance the mountains with a little hustle, drive back down to the largest city in British Columbia, Vancouver. From there, you can take the ferry over to Victoria, the capital of BC, and not by accident. There's a lot of history as it relates to the 49th parallel, and you can learn all about it when you visit. One of the biggest draws to Victoria is Bouchard Gardens, and it is an extraordinary botanical adventure. As long as you're on Vancouver Island, there's more to see. Tofino is just 196 miles. Oh wait, it's kilometers. It's 317 kilometers from Victoria, where you'll find stunning beaches, ancient rainforests, and year-round surfing at Cox Bay. We also took a hike to find a plane crash hidden in the forest. Our next region has eight spots that are each unique in their own way. It's not always the easiest place to travel due to the cost and popularity, but the weather and beauty cannot be denied. California has some of the best coastal drives we have ever experienced. Highway 1 is an international destination. The drive from Monterey to Carmel and over the Bigsby Bridge will have you looking for a place to pull over at every turn. There are also exceptional state parks down the entire route for those that can meet the size requirements. And if you keep driving south, you'll eventually make your way to another top destination, San Luis Obispo. We've been there twice, the first time camping at an RV resort and experiencing all there is to do and see and eat, and the second time camping on the beach, which is something everyone may want to try at least once. And when you're done shaking the sand out of your shoes, you can head over to Paso Robles for wine tours, tastings, and great food, and total relaxation, or even some adventure. Now, let's look north. The next three destinations will offer a little something for everyone, starting with Mark's old stomping grounds, Lake Tahoe, California. 
There are no words to describe seeing Lake Tahoe for the first time. It's bigger than you might imagine, bluer, and definitely colder. Although there isn't great camping near the lake, you can stay in Truckee and take a short drive into Tahoe for unlimited hiking, swimming, kayaking, or boating. Not too far away from Tahoe is one of America's most stunning national parks. Yosemite is famed for breathtaking waterfalls, ancient sequoia trees, iconic towering mountains such as Half Dome and El Cap. Getting a reservation can be tricky and it will take some planning, but be persistent because visiting it is worth it. And if you enjoy hiking, the Mist Trail is one of our favorites. Mount Whitney is the tallest mountain in the continental United States at 14,505 feet. And just 100 miles away is the lowest point in the United States, Death Valley, 282 feet below sea level. If you appreciate the beauty of the desert, you'll enjoy your visit to Death Valley. You'll feel like you're the inside of a painting with the vivid colors at sunset. And there is plenty of dispersed camping provided you're visiting at the right time of year. He's on it. No. It's right there. It's right there. I see itself. Ah! What are you doing, Trish? Well, this is a fat little mouse. There's no such thing as a fat desert animal. Okay, so this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> and do that to keep him keep, keep him away. Keep him at bay. For those that like the city, winding roads and Ghirardelli chocolate, uh, I tips want and tricks chocolate. for San Francisco. San Francisco will be a must stop. There is certainly a lot to take in, from street performances, trolley rides, even lazy seals on the dock. If you visit, you're better off staying outside the city and getting transportation into the city. And a word of caution, the car break-in situation is real, so keep your truck parked out of the city. As RVers, we travel with too many valuable things that are vital for our trips. But it can be fun and memorable if you're careful. Our last stop in California is Joshua Tree National Park, best known for, well, Joshua trees, and more than you can even imagine. It's also known for the very best sunset, and if you're lucky, maybe someone will be playing the bagpipes. There are several great campgrounds in the park, and we've stayed at Jumbo Rocks and Indian Cove. We'll go south of the border shortly, but first, let's travel across the country to the Sunshine State. I am. I'm so excited. We're about to go to the Key West International Airport and get on a seaplane so that we can fly over to the Dry Tortugas. They're going to give us a little aerial tour. Then they're literally going to land on the water and drop us off so we can tour the fort and then snorkel and then hop back on the plane and come back. Welcome to the fort. <laughs> Key West is an iconic place to visit in the United States, as it's located at the very southernmost point of Florida, just 90 miles away from Cuba. Key West has a linen and flip-flop kind of vibe, with the best key lime pie, Cuban coffee, a big-time party atmosphere if you hit the town at night, rounded out with history and friendly locals. And if you're up for an excursion, you can visit the Dry Tortugas National Park. You can catch a ferry there, but if budget allows, flying adds an indescribable element when you get to see everything from the air. You'll learn about the history of the fort, enjoy the beach, snorkel, and work up an appetite for the great food back in town. A common stop on the way back from Key West is perhaps one of the most unique national parks in America, Everglades National Park. You're telling me an alligator can totally run 30 so. miles per hour? Yes for about 30 to 50 yards. It's short-lived, but you won't outrun him. He's very, very fast. Holy.
we were so lucky to have booked a tour with Down South Airboats. Because of their ownership, you are given further access into the Everglades and the private tours are one of a kind. We learned about the landscape, history, saw incredible wildlife, and saw more gators than I ever need to see again. But this was an unforgettable experience that we recommend to anyone. Florida is known to have some of the best beaches in the world with the finest sand. But one of our favorite beach spots to visit by RV is Destin with 30A and Rosemary Beach nearby. There are a few places you can camp with full hookups on the beach. We've camped along the Gulf many times and enjoy it equally as much each time. In addition to experiences and locations, Florida has some key attractions too. Disney and Kennedy Space Center. Our last episode included our recent stay at Fort Wilderness Campground, a great solution for families where maybe not everybody wants to visit the park. Those that like Disney will love Fort Wilderness and it's worth doing at least once. We were lucky to get to experience the Crew-6 launch from the NASA property. With the frequency of Starlink launches these days, your chances of timing a visit to Kennedy and seeing a launch is pretty good. Three, two, one, it is full power and lift off. Oh, cool. you got it, you got it, go. go. And while you're there, stop by the Visitor Center and get a tour of NASA. If you're on the east coast of Florida, you have countless camping options. Melbourne, Sebastian Inlet, Stewart are all good options worth mentioning. But St. Augustine is America's oldest city and a beautiful place to visit for history and beachfront camping. Now let's head for the border and visit five places in Mexico that you can get to by RV or plane. First up from season two is Puerto Vallarta, a popular cruise destination, also makes a great place to spend the winter. We spent three months just outside of Puerto Vallarta in a little beach town called La Panita and used it as a home base to travel to all kinds of other locations like Guadalajara, Tequila, and Sayulita. Located in Jalisco, there's no question what the town of Tequila is best known for. The distillery tours are a great way to walk through the history of this spirit and sip on some different kinds of agave drink. We had a tour by Angel visiting several distilleries and he let us know where to go experience a little of the nightlife and some great food. Near La Panita is a popular surfing destination, Sayulita, Mexico, just north of Puerto Vallarta and a great place to hang out by the beach, surf, take a short excursion, or experience some of the best Mexican food you may ever have. Some might be concerned with the safety of RVing to Mexico, and we have an entire episode on just that subject. We'll link it below. But if you're considering RVing to Mexico, you might enjoy our season two playlist. If you're looking to dip your toe in Mexican RV travel, a common place to start is the Baja. There are large groups of RVers that head south for the winter, so you can likely find a caravan. There are plenty of places to either dry camp on the beach or hook up at an RV park and just enjoy the Mexican hospitality. Although you can RV to Cabo, we recently flew to take a quick couples trip and stayed at a vacation rental right on the beach. You may totally understand when we say we needed a break from the snow. This gave us just what you would expect a little beach time, margaritas, amazing food, shopping, and some adventure by taking a stand-up paddleboard to the arch. Our guide said that um, right now it's so busy because the whales are right down around the corner. So all these boats are going out to see the whales. There's a lot of them. And uh, he said in May, June, and July, there's not as many whales, so it's very quiet here. So it's a little easier. You have a little bit more to yourself. It's not as, a lot, not as much activity. Of course, the reason people are out here is because it's snowing everywhere.
this next region might surprise you, as the Midwest is not the first place you think for RV destinations. An unexpected RV destination as you make your way across the country is actually a truck stop. In a quarter mile, merge on the I-80 West. Oh, it's largest truck stop. Welcome to the Iowa 80 truck stop. So we figured we'd stop and get fuel here and check it out and see what it, see what all the hoopla is about. That, my friend, is a trucking museum. Really? Yes. I don't know if I can handle another museum. No. no. I realized that the 80 went from New Jersey. Here we are in Iowa. Oh wow. All the way to San Francisco. Oh, that's crazy. That's so cool. I didn't know that either. The I-80 truck stop is the biggest truck stop in America, and they'll let you know. There is plenty of RV parking. In fact, there's plenty of everything, including a spinning Peterbilt showcased in the window. With that, of course, there's a truck museum next door. But our favorite thing was hearing the semis honk on the way out under the sign. And Mark certainly took advantage of that opportunity. We're out of here. <laughs> Another man-made destination is the Gateway Arch, branded with the title of National Park in 2018. We visited the arch during our Route 66 travel. Hold on, Gary, we're turning left. Oh, he doesn't like We're turning left, Gary. Oh, hold on, oh. Gary, hold on, Gary. Ah! And we really enjoyed our time there. The museum was well done. The documentary explaining how the arch was built was fascinating. And the narrator's voice, will transport you right back to grade school. And for the first time, its grand scale was apparent. We elected to take the elevator up to the top, which was a bit claustrophobic, but worth the ride. Mostly just to know that when you look, you know you stood right there. We're making our way north to our favorite summer destinations. But first, let's stop at a Midwestern border state in Louisville, Kentucky, on the Bourbon Trail. These kitties here actually do a lot of work. They're here to trap the mice, keep them at bay. Really? They're working kitties? These are working kitties. They're on the payroll. Dinner is pay. What? Each time we visit Kentucky, we enjoy it. There are so many things to see and do. And the distillery tours are beautiful, and you don't have to stop at just one. Most of the time, they have a cute little place to eat, too. We stayed at My Kentucky Home State Park, but the horse park is another great spot. You can take in the Churchill Downs for a weekday night race and happy hour, and carefully place your bets. You won't be too far from the Mammoth Caves either, so you might as well stop there, too. RVing makes events even better, and a couple events made our top 100 list. The first one is EAA's Air Venture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, or people just call it Oshkosh. It's an annual air show that attracts thousands of RVers. And get this, plane campers, where people fly in and camp under their wing. Plus, you get a traditional air show with fighter jets and the Thunderbirds, all the aerobatics, and the best fireworks display we've ever seen. After the air show, you can head north to Door County, Wisconsin, and hit a festival, or five, or farmer's markets. Whatever you do, it's beautiful. And if you're there in late summer, you'll be lined up perfect for cherry picking season. We loved our time in Door County. We rented bikes, we took an evening cruise, we had a wonderful date night out. Door County will be a place we visit again soon. At this point, we're pretty close to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. We just need to backtrack toward Green Bay and loop around clockwise to the UP. You won't want to miss Pictured Rocks National Seashore. It's hard to believe that this kind of coastline is within the Great Lakes, but we encourage you to either take an evening cruise or, if you're with friends, share in the cost and rent a pontoon boat. We stayed right on Lake Superior Tourist Park Campground. Now, people from the Upper Peninsula are called Youpers, and people below the Mackinac Bridge are called Trolls. <laughs> so, we'll have to just go south of the bridge and catch the ferry to Mackinac Island. There really is no place like Mackinac Island. 
with no cars allowed, everything is on foot or horse carriage, but mostly bikes. There are a lot of bikes. It would be best for you to bring your own as renting is expensive. In fact, mm, everything's pretty expensive there, but it's a unique experience worth doing. Best known for fudge, you can enjoy Main Street and the hustle and bustle of everyone there. But if you could just stay one night, you'll get to experience the island before and after everyone leaves. And there's just something special about that. There's still so much to see and do in Michigan. Our next two destinations are right next to each other, Sleeping Bear Dunes and Traverse City. Sleeping Bear Dunes is impressive. And if you're up for a hike, follow the trail to Lake Michigan. There's about 200 false summits, making the arrival feel like an accomplishment, but drinking in the view will be worth it. Instead of hiking back, let's just cut right over to Traverse City. The water is so clear and blue in this part of Michigan, you might think you're in the Caribbean. And if you like wine, go on a guided tour or pick a driver and do a self-guided wine tour up the old Mission Peninsula. Michiganders take their summer camping seriously. There are too many state park campgrounds to list, but one that stands out is Mears State Park. Some complain that these parks might be a little tight, and we get that, but everyone is doing the same thing. They're barbecuing and enjoying the summer, and Mears State Park is right next door to Silver Lake Campground, so it's kind of a twofer. Okay, back to Canada, but we're so close to Niagara Falls, so let's just stop in real quick and then cross the border to our north. Niagara Falls is another checklist destination for RVers. You can see the falls from either the US or Canadian side, and both have their advantages. So enjoy the falls whichever side is best for your trip. But if you're up for getting a little wet, head down the tunnels or on a boat to see the falls up close. This would be a good time to make our way to Toronto. That will create the perfect route to visit Montreal and Quebec City. Next, on our way to Nova Scotia. They said that they smell like maple syrup. I think they just like watching Americans smell their money in the parking lot. That's what I think. <laughs> they do, they smell like maple syrup. Toronto is a big city. We parked our rig at the marina and rode our bikes around to the Toronto sign and then kept moving to Montreal. Montreal felt like being in Europe, but that is a little strange when you're driving your own truck. We enjoyed the local cuisine and plan on spending more time there as this season heads us back to Quebec City. This is only one of two locations on our top 100 list that we don't have our own footage, but we know it belongs on this list and we cannot wait to visit this summer. The same is true for Nova Scotia. The KYD community has been so helpful in sending us ideas and places to visit. This season is going to be spectacular. This puts us in a perfect position to start in on the Northeast during part two, next Sunday completing our top 100 list, which includes some of the very best locations and national parks in North America. We'd love to know, where are you headed this summer? Leave it in the comments below. And thank you for letting us be a small part in your big adventure. <laughs>